Hey everybody, Rob Berger here from robberger.com. Welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the awesome power of compound interest. It really is our superpower. It's what can take someone who makes an ordinary average income and turn them into a millionaire. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through seven calculations that show just how powerful compounding is. And on the seventh calculation, it's actually going to relate to debt. We're going to apply the principles of compounding to debt to show how we can get out of debt faster and for a lot less money in interest. So with that, let's get started. What you're seeing on the screen is a simple Google spreadsheet. I put together uh, this uh, effectively a future value calculator. And uh, so for this first calculation, let's assume we can save, uh, we'll say five bucks a day. So that's $150 a month. I'm going to assume we can earn 9.8% interest on our returns. I didn't actually pull that out of thin air. It maybe seems like an odd number. I actually got that from Vanguard. Um, and what they've shown is that with a, a portfolio of 80% stocks and 20% bonds from 1926 to, to 2020, you can see here it's returned an average of 9.8%. And for this first calculation, just to sort of get, get things going, we'll assume we do this, we'll say for 10 years. If we do that, we end up with just over $30,000. You can see that here. And these two numbers are really important. The red number, 18,000, that represents how much we actually save. That's the hard part, right? That's the spending less than you make, cutting back where you can, saving that five bucks a day. If we had taken that money for 10 years and just stuffed it under our mattress, we'd have $18,000. This number, the $12,377.25, that's what we earned on our investments. That's the money that we earned while we slept, while we were on vacation, while we were watching TV. Uh, that's a really important number, and it, it's going to become even more important as we move through these calculations. All right, for the next one, I'll just copy this. We'll bring it down here. And now what I want to do, let's assume that rather than doing this for 10 years, we do it for 45. We start when we're 20, we work until we're 65. Any guess on what that number is going to be? $1,465,000 and change. And what I think is arguably the most impressive thing about this calculation are these two numbers. The 81,000, as you know, that represents our hard work, our, you know, what we saved over 45 years. But look at what that earned us. Almost $1.4 million dollars. And this is the thing that I think a lot of folks don't understand is that with the power of compounding, over time, you can turn relatively small amounts of money into great big piles of cash. And I think if more people understood this, they would embrace investing, they would start earlier. Compounding really is our superpower. We just have to, we have to do the hard part, right? We have to do the, the $150 a month, year in and year out, or whatever amount you can save. Uh, to get the ball rolling. But once we do, over time, eventually, compounding takes over and works its magic. All right. Now, for this third calculation, I'll copy this here again. We want to focus on the length of time. I've assumed here for this calculation 45 years. What happens if we change that number? What if, imagine we get, we decide to put off investing for just a year, just one year, and we save for 44 years instead of 45. We'll look at that, we drop, oh, what's that, about $140,000. That one year cost us $140,000. The point is, every year matters. And by the way, if we delayed five years and invested for 40 years, the number just really drops to under $900,000. Every year counts, and of course, we could bump it up a year, and watch our number jump significantly uh, as a result of that. So, you know, when, when I hear folks say, don't invest a nickel until you've paid off every dime of debt, I cringe. I can't think of worse personal uh, finance advice. Getting out of debt, important, you bet. But so is investing. We want to get the power of compounding working as quickly as we can. All right. On to the next one. We'll just copy this one, go down one more. Here it is. So now what I want to do, and we'll actually put this back to 45 years. Now I want to show you how important this 9.8% figure is. Let's imagine 
that we didn't do quite as well, but we did well. Let's just assume we went to 9.5%. So that's only a 0.3%, 30 basis points. Doesn't seem like much. Uh, you can actually earn more than 30 basis points on a savings account these days, even with rock bottom interest rates. But look what this does to our number. And again, we're comparing it to this number up here. It drops it from the 1.465 we had here all the way down to 1. Point, or 1, yeah, 1.32 million. And that's just 30 basis points. So every single percent matters. It's something to think about when, you fig when you're thinking about how to invest your money, what your asset allocation should be, sh how much you should, should you have in stocks, how much should you have in bonds. But where it really matters is with investment fees. And let me show you what I mean. We're going to copy this again. We're going to take this back up to 9.8%. And we'll do the same thing here. Imagine that instead of investing on your own, you hired an investment advisor. Uh, most investment advisors, and these are fiduciaries, these are individuals that by law must put your interests first. They tend to charge 1% of the amount invested. Now, they don't all do that. Uh, and you can find much less expensive ones like at Vanguard, for example. But sort of the industry standard is 1%. So what would happen if instead of earning 9.8%, we had to pay 1% to the advisor and we earned 8.8%? What would that do to our number? Drops it down over $400,000. That seemingly small fee that, an, that a fiduciary investment advisor is charging us takes a... a, a big part of our wealth. That 1% translates into what? That's almost $430,000 that we lose because of that seemingly small fee. It's why I say friends don't let friends hire expensive investment advisors because it really does uh, destroy wealth. All right, now I wanna come back up here and uh, we're gonna do a slightly different calculation. And for this one, what we're gonna do we're going to assume that uh, someone invests for 10 years, just like we did here, they have 30,000, and then they just stop. And they decide they're not gonna invest anymore. They're done with it. But they leave their money invested for the next 35. So what would that look like? Well, we can do a quick future value calculation. This is the same formula I've been using. And uh, so we need an interest rate, so we can just grab this one right here. I'll just click in that cell. We're gonna divide by 12 uh, to get monthly compounding, and remember, we're going to now do this for 35 years, but we're not going to contribute anything. So I'll put a zero here. That's where the contributions go. But we're not starting from scratch, right? Because we've, we've worked hard and saved uh, $30,000 over 10 years. What do we have 35 years later? We have $924,000. And we can actually recreate these numbers, right? Because what we'll do, the 18,000 is the same, right? Because we didn't contribute anymore. So we can just put this right over here, 18,000, there it is. Uh, and this number though, look at this. If we take this, I think this will work if I just copy it over. Big returns on that $18,000 of our hard work. Remember, we did this for 10 years, we had 30,000, we stopped, investing more, but we kept it invested. And when we retired, we weren't quite a millionaire, but we were pretty darn close. Now, I wanna take this, copy it over here. Let's imagine that someone kind of did the reverse. Rather than investing the first 10 years and then sort of coasting the next 35, they delayed for 10 years. They, they didn't invest at all. And then they decided, no worries, they're gonna invest for the, the final 35. Well, what's that look like? Well, they don't have nearly as much money. They've contributed a lot more than this person has, but because they delayed that 10 years, they ended up with just a little bit more than half the total wealth. This really underscores both the power of compounding, but the importance of investing as early as you possibly can. Delaying even one year can make a huge difference. Delaying 10 years uh, can make a life-changing difference. That's truly how powerful compound interest is. All right, now I promised you one about debt, and so I want to show you this. We're going to move away from the spreadsheet. This is a simple debt calculator uh, that I built, and um, you can see what we're going to assume. 20,000, we'll call it credit card debt. 
you have an interest rate, uh, unfortunately, credit cards are expensive. We'll assume 20%. They go higher than that. And um, normally, the minimum payment is roughly around uh, 2% of the balance. So we're going to assume a monthly minimum payment of $400. And for the moment, we're going to assume no extra monthly payments. So what do we have? Well, you can see it's going to take us nine years to pay this debt off. And it's going to cost us more in, in interest alone, more than the current balance of the loan, $23,360. Keep those two numbers in mind. Nine years to pay it off and 20, 23,000. Now let's imagine we take that 150 that we were investing, we'll just use the same number, and we're gonna pay this extra amount on our debt each month. What's that do to the nine year time frame and the $23,000 in interest? Well, it cuts the time frame in about half, roughly. And look what it does to the interest payments. Drops it all the way below, just barely below $11,000. That relatively small extra payment helped us get out of this debt in half the time and for even less, less than half the interest. Compounding, it applies to building wealth through investing. It also applies the concept to getting out of debt as fast as possible without paying an arm and a leg in interest. Or actually, $11,000 is still a lot, but a lot better than twenty-three grand. So there you go. Compound Compound interest is truly our superpower. When we understand that, I think we're on the path uh, to building wealth and financial freedom for ourselves, even if you're starting small. When I started investing hmm, almost 30 years ago, we had almost no money to invest. We were not investing a lot at all, a few bucks a month. That's all we could afford. As we were able to invest more, we did, and we were patient. We weren't trying to get rich quick. We weren't chasing the latest fad. We were just doing smart things with our money, which I think for most folks is low cost index funds. And over time, it enables you with the help of compounding to build wealth. Listen, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to help you out any way I can. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, maybe give it a thumbs up for me. I'd appreciate it. Until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.